The State Reform School for Boys in Westboro, Massachusetts was a state institution for the reformation of juvenile offenders from 1848 to 1884. Originally, the facility was built to house up to 300 young boys, but in 1852, an addition was made to the building, adding a further 300 students. By 1857, there were 614 boys at the reform school. The school was one of three state training schools in the Division of Juvenile Training for the Massachusetts Department of Public Welfare and represented an investment of more than $1 million by the Commonwealth for the purpose of training delinquent boys to become better citizens. While attending the school, the boys were tested both physically and mentally. Improvement had to be measurable by a physician. The students went through a program of psychometric and aptitude testing, followed by psychological work, and were augmented where necessary by psychiatric treatment. This was only part of an extensive diagnostic and remedial program. The young men also had the opportunity to assist in the operation of modern labor-saving machinery and equipment in farming and other maintenance activities. Unfortunately for those boys committed, the facility was not a school, nor did it reform. It was, in fact, an extension of the adult prison system for male adolescents and children. It was, in all aspects, nothing more than a dumping ground for what society deemed as youthful misfits. The institution accepted boys from age 7 to 17, whether homeless or horse thief, truant or sexual predator, for stubbornness or stealing grapes, and even the mentally challenged. The boys mostly came from single parent homes, if they had any at all, and most were first generation born in America from the inner cities. In 1858, a cemetery was laid out and graded on the grounds of the institution. A receiving tomb was constructed and a gravel walk laid around the lot. The cemetery would be used from 1858 to 1884 to bury any boys who died while in state custody and who were not claimed by parents or relatives. Prior to burial, a service was held in the chapel with boys from the reform school present. After the service, the coffin would be loaded into a wagon and transported to the cemetery, some distance from the main building. Over the 36-year history of the institution, approximately 75 young men lost their life while attending. It is unknown how many of those were buried on the grounds. And while the school had opened some 10 years prior, it is unclear what had happened to the inmates that had passed before the cemetery was made. Years later, the school transferred its land and buildings to the state mental hospital. It is unclear what became of this original cemetery. The exact location of the burial grounds were never recounted, although there are some entries in the annual reports that gave insight into its location. In 1859, a devastating fire consumed half of the building. It is believed one of the inmates was to blame. Due to the damage at the institution, the school created a nautical branch to house some of the older boys, and they were sent to the school ships. The younger boys were housed in an old mill nearby, while some remained in what was left of the reform school. By 1880, the legislature, having deemed the reform school a failed experiment in a congregate setting, and needing additional space for an overcrowded institutional system for the insane, used the land and buildings to establish the Westboro State Hospital. By 1884, the State Reform School for Boys was relocated a couple miles away in Westboro. It was renamed the Lyman School for Boys and was established with a cottage system. After 12 years of riots, arson, mass runaways, and brutality, a reform movement took control of the school program and abandoned the congregate system of juvenile jails. During the transition to the cottage system, the best boys 15 and younger remained at the Peters Farm Reform School, while the most aggressive and dangerous boys were sent to the newly opened Concord Reformatory and places like it. There were many cottages on site at Lyman School, one of which was labeled the House of Silence, or the Correctional Cottage. 
This building was where no boyish laughter could be heard. Even the most furtive whisper was muffled by a shielded hand. The house where sturdy lads ate plain meals, unsavored by conversation or witty smiles. This was the place every court and probation officer, every judge, and every social worker in Massachusetts recognized as where the bad boys were sent. The correctional cottage was not where you wanted to end up. When the United States was thrust into World War II, all the eligible boys and male staff were either drafted or enlisted. The staffing of Lyman was left up to the women and men too old to serve in the armed forces. Consequentially, classroom attendance was suspended during this time, and every physically able boy was put to work on the farm, tended to the boiler, shoveled coal, worked the kitchen, shoveled snow in the winter months, or landscaped in the summer. After the closing of Lyman and the remaining juvenile jails in Massachusetts, the Division of Youth Services was again reorganized and the juvenile reform movement returned to the congregate system that was disbanded in 1885. Boys committed to the DYS as repeat criminal offenders or dangerous felons were incarcerated in the same manner as the reform school, in a segregated locked facility. This time, the housing components were located throughout numerous communities in the state. The populations were much smaller and easier to control, feed, rehabilitate, and educate. As opposed to the boys that were sentenced to Lyman as status offenders, boys committed to the DYS are gang members, sex offenders, drug dealers, and killers. The Lyman School for Boys in Westboro now sits empty, with paint peeling from the ceilings and walls and furniture askew. Some estimate the campus, which was thought to be the first reform school in the country, was opened in the mid-19th century. The school was owned by the state and closed in 1971. Today, Lyman's sprawling farmlands have been sold off or conveyed to other state and local agencies. The remaining campus buildings that were not rehabilitated for use by other agencies were abandoned and left boarded up to endure the ravages of time and neglect until they were left barren or collapsed into their own foundations. When Lyman closed, the school had 265 acres of land.